Judging by the name, you might think that the Dell XPS 13 Plus is a bigger version of Dell's iconic laptop, but it's actually quite the opposite. This is the most minimalist design we've ever seen from Dell. But it isn't just a design statement. Dell managed to cram in a 28-watt 12th Gen Core i7 processor into a sleek 2.7-pound machine. And the result is a system that can outperform even the mighty MacBook Pro M2. I use the Dell XPS 13 for a couple of weeks, and there's plenty to like about this Ultra Portable, including its stunning OLED touch display, comfy keyboard, and superb performance, especially if you engage Ultra mode. But not all of Dell's bets have paid off in tinkering with the winning formula. The Dell XPS 13 Plus starts at a fairly steep $1299, which is the same price as the MacBook Pro M2 13-inch. The starting config includes a 12th gen Intel Core i5 processor, 8 gigs of RAM, and 256 gigs of storage. You also get a 1080p non-touch display. Our test model costs $1949, which is around the same price as the $1999 MacBook Pro 14-inch and bumps up the CPU to a Core i7, the RAM to 16 gigs, and there's an OLED touch display on board, which is a $300 upgrade. There are plenty of other XPS 13 Plus upgrade options, including 32 gigs of RAM, one or two terabytes of storage, and a 4K non-touch display. The Dell XPS 13 Plus represents a fairly bold and risky departure from the regular Dell XPS 13, which Dell is keeping in its lineup. The look is definitely more clean and modern, starting with a seamless glass touchpad. There's no parting lines, and I'm not complaining, since I found it easy to navigate the cursor and perform various gestures. I'm less a fan of the touch function row. The keys themselves don't provide any feedback and the lighting just doesn't look as premium as the rest of the chassis. And while you can toggle between the function keys and the shortcut buttons for things like brightness and volume, you can't see both at the same time. Up front, I wish the Dell XPS 13 Plus was easier to open. There's really no lip to grab onto, so I had to rely on wedging a fingernail in there to lift the lid. The XPS 13 Plus is fairly light at 2.71 pounds, or 2.77 pounds for the OLED model. And the overall CNC machined aluminum chassis feels sturdy and smooth. You can take your pick between platinum and graphite, and I kind of prefer the latter because it looks a little bit more badass. Welcome to the shortest section of our XPS 13 Plus review, and that's because there's very little to say here. This laptop has just two Thunderbolt 4 ports, that's it and there's no headphone jack. The Dell XPS 13 Plus is a feast for the eyes if you're willing to splurge on the 3.5K OLED touch display. When I watched The Gray Man on Netflix, I really appreciated the level of details in Chris Evans' ribbed yellow and brown polo shirt and his gold sunglasses, as well as the bulging paint in his bicep. As you'd expect from an OLED display, the blacks are perfectly black and the viewing angles are ultra wide. The image gets fairly bright too, though not as beaming as the competition. The climactic battle between Ryan Gosling and Evans looked a bit dimmer than I'd like. We measured an average of 366 nits on the XPS 13 Plus screen compared to 495 for the MacBook Air M2 and 490 for the MacBook Pro M2. This panel delivers excellent color reproduction and accuracy based on our testing. The XPS 13 Plus registered nearly 119% of the sRGB color gamut and 84% of the more demanding DCI-P3 color space. The MacBook Air M2 scored a lower 107 and 75.9%, and the MacBook Pro M2 was also behind. I was pleasantly surprised by the XPS 13 Plus's quad speaker setup. When listening to Post Malone and Doja Cat on I Like You, the Dell delivered more powerful audio than the MacBook Air M2 and punchier vocals. One of my favorite things about the Dell XPS 13 Plus is the keyboard. At first, it looks like the zero lattice keyboard that goes edge to edge with no spacing between the keys, would result in a cramped typing experience. But then I started using the keyboard to write this review and found it extremely comfortable with a surprising amount of travel. On the 10 fast fingers typing test, I got 69 words per minute with 93% accuracy, which is within my usual range. I'm not a fan of the shrunken up and down keys. The left and right arrow keys that flank them are much larger. And I wish the power button were actually marked. It's right next to the backspace key and a bit too easy to hit though at least it's recessed more than the rest of the layout. One more thing, this might sound nitpicky, but the backlighting on the keys looks a bit uneven, which is not something I'd expect for a system at this price. The glass touchpad on the XPS 13 Plus is generally responsive despite there not being lines to mark where it begins and ends. My only issue with the touchpad is that I sometimes accidentally selected text 
while scrolling if my left hand brushed up against the pad. It's almost too sensitive. But the piezo technology used to provide that clicking feeling is very convincing. On one occasion during my testing, the touchpad stopped working altogether, and rebooting did not help. But the cursor came back after I performed a system update. The Dell XPS 13 Plus is designed to deliver pro-level performance in a compact design, and it mostly delivers. I had no problem bouncing between dozens of tabs in Chrome while responding to lots of Slack messages and playing Spotify in the background. On Geekbench 5.4, which measures overall CPU performance, the XPS 13 Plus turned in a single core score of 1797 and a multi core score of 10,621. That multi core number jumped to over 11,000 when we set the XPS 13 Plus to ultra performance mode. That beats both the MacBook Air M2 and the MacBook Pro M2. The Lenovo Yoga 9i Gen 7 hit just 7,150. The XPS 13 Plus also turned in higher scores on the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test, which measures SSD performance. We saw an average read speed of 4,879 megabytes per second and a write speed of 3638. The MacBook Air M2 mustered only 2,800 and 2,200 megabytes per second, respectively. The MacBook Pro M2 scored better what was still below the Dell. The XPS 13 Plus sped past the competition on our handbrake video editing test, which involves transcoding a 4K file to 1080p. The Dell took an average of 8 minutes and 37 seconds in regular mode, but just 6.49 in ultra mode. The MacBook Air M2 took 7.52 to complete the task, and the MacBook Pro M2, with active cooling, needed 6.51. Turning to photo editing, the Dell XPS 13 scored 6.70 on the Puget Bench Photoshop benchmark, and 691 in ultra mode. The MacBook Air M2 scored a higher 821, as did the MacBook Pro M2 with 817. It was a similar story on Premiere Pro for video editing. The XPS 13 Plus scored 279 in regular mode and 327 in ultra mode to the Air's 452 and the MacBook Pro's 552. Here's my biggest complaint with the XPS 13 Plus, the battery life, at least for the OLED model. On the TomSky battery test, which involves continuous web surfing at 150 nits of screen brightness, this laptop lasted only 7 hours and 34 minutes. That's pretty poor, as we prefer 9 hours or more. To be fair, you should expect much longer endurance if you opt for a regular LCD panel. In fact, Dell rates the XPS 13 Plus for up to 13 hours for the full HD Plus model with a non-touch display. By comparison, the MacBook Air M2 lasted 14 hours on our battery test so nearly double the OLED XPS 13 Plus, and the MacBook Pro M2 endured for over 18 hours. The good news is that the Dell XPS 13 Plus ships with a fast charger that promises to get you to 80% capacity in under an hour. The XPS 13 Plus makes do with a 720p webcam at a time that many laptop makers are upgrading to 1080p, but I thought the image quality was decent when I put the system up against the MacBook Air in a Google Meet video call. While the image quality was grainier and darker than I liked, I thought that the XPS 13 Plus did a better job capturing more natural colors in my face and there was more detail in my hair. The good news is that the Dell XPS 13 Plus didn't get too loud despite having a fan on board. I noticed the fans whirring up when I had a lot of tabs open at once, but overall it didn't prove distracting. However, I did notice that the XPS 13 Plus gets warm, especially on the underside of the system. On our own heat test, which involves playing a high-res YouTube video for 15 minutes, the bottom of the laptop reached 102.6 degrees. We consider anything above 95 degrees uncomfortable, but the touchpad and center of the keyboard stayed under 90. Overall, I have mixed emotions about the Dell XPS 13 Plus. It's one of the most powerful ultra portables ever, and Dell deserves credit for delivering such speed in a design that's even more compact than the MacBook Air M2 and MacBook Pro M2. You also get a very comfortable keyboard, top-notch OLED display if you're willing to splurge. The reason why the XPS 13 Plus gets 3.5 stars instead of 4 is because of its short battery life, though you can expect more endurance from a non-OLED model, and its capacitive function row, which looks and feels a bit chintzy for a $1,200 laptop. And some may be turned off by the dearth of ports and how warm the bottom can get. In this price range, I prefer the MacBook Air M2 for its much longer battery life, more ports, and less fussy touchpad. But overall, the XPS 13 Plus is a good option if you prefer Windows. For Tom's Guide, this is Mark Spoonell.